Hello everyone and welcome to Art with Z. Today we have another video about drawing outside with crayons, but this one's a little bit different because instead of just objects from nature, we're going to be drawing a house. For those of us who live in the city, buildings are all around us and they can be very interesting subject matter. Not to mention that drawing buildings can be an invaluable skill if you're interested in ever trying your hand at comic books, manga, fan art, or illustration, because buildings make up such a big part of human life that it's tricky to avoid drawing them at all if you want to depict that life in an accurate way. Today I want to show you how to draw houses in a fun, easy, low-pressure way. All you need is a piece of paper, your crayons, and a comfortable shady drawing spot either outside, looking out your window if you have a good view there, or you can even use a photo if that is the best option for you right now. I'm starting light with my crayons and I'm starting with big basic shapes, beginning with the triangle of the roof on top of the house with just a light gray. And because I can't layer things too much with crayon, I am leaving that corner blank and entering some green, you know, just a basic blobby shape for that tree that is standing in front of the house and partially blocking my view. If you're just starting out, you might find it useful to draw a house that doesn't have much standing in front of it, because that does add a little bit of an extra layer of difficulty when you can't see the entire thing or show it in your drawing. Now I'm using a darker green to draw the clump of trees behind the house, which look wonderfully like scribbles on their own and also create a great negative space behind the house, uh, also known as a space that defines the shape of the thing in front of it. That dark green contrasts with the white trim on the house to make the house really come forward into our view. I'm being very loose with it for now because I know that I can come in and darken and add some more detail to those trees later, which is part of the fun of working loosely and without an underlying sketch like this. If you find that you do want to begin with a light pencil drawing to guide you in your crayon drawing, then absolutely go for it. That can be super useful. But I would say start out light and start out with big shapes the same way that I am now with the, just the crayon starting out because getting bogged down in details this early can really mess you up. I've just put in another big gray shape for the porch roof and I'm trying to eyeball and keep things in close to the proportion that I'm seeing. But remember if things get a little bit funky or change size or shape from what you see in front of you, then that's not necessarily wrong. Maybe you've just invented your own whole brand new house using the one that you're seeing as a basis or inspiration. I'm using my crayon to lightly outline the edges of the windows and satellite dish and things like that because I want to color around those lighter areas and bits of white trim instead of coloring over them. Remember, just like you probably won't draw every leaf on a tree, you might not get every tile on the roof of a house or the wood grain on the siding that makes up the walls, and that's okay. The important thing is to pay attention to how you feel about your drawing and the moment where it goes from looking too squishy and undefined to having a satisfying level of detail for you. I've lightly marked in the color of the wall up on top and now I'm putting in some colors for the prayer flags up there. Just lightly marking them in. Now 
I'm working on a 9 by 12 inch drawing paper here and on this scale flags are very small bits of color but having them marked in there instead of just white will help me with the next step which is to take a darker blue and indicate the shadow cast by the flags and edge of the roof from the sun up above. That shadow really helps us see that the wall, the flags, and the roof are all their own objects occupying their own space and dimension instead of just flat colors tacked together on a piece of paper, which of course they are that too. We've got some complicated stuff going on in the lower half of the house because there's the porch, the pillars, the porch railing and steps, and of course the wall and windows themselves are cast into shadow, making them a lot darker than the same color wall up on top. So again, I'm using my crayon to lightly outline what I'm going to put in. I'm blocking in some red for that red painted part of the porch and the steps as well. Try starting out with just the basic shape of the steps as an entire mass and then adding horizontal lines for the shadows. I'm loosely putting in a grid for that stuff down below, which I don't know what it's called, but it's yellowish. And I'm going to use that same kind of goldenrod color while I have it to put in an indication of the flowers lining the walk leading up to the house, which on the scale that I'm working are just little dots. And I'm also putting in the concrete path that starts where the stairs end. Now let's get some green up front here. And I want to give this tree in front of the house some light, delicate, flowy branches. It's a really beautiful tree, I think. So even though our main attention is on the house itself, I think the tree deserves some love. And kind of going around the perimeter of the image and trying to fill in a little bit of everything, even in this beginning stage, helps create a full and well-rounded world, even if everything doesn't get the same amount of detail in the end. I'm sort of eyeballing the location of the pillars and the railing for the porch. It's really useful for this to pay attention to how different parts of the house relate to one another so I can say, okay, the one pillar kind of lines up with the right hand edge of this window and use that as a guideline for myself and I'm putting in dark blue now for the wall of the house under the porch roof. So you can see it's much darker than up above because it's getting much, much less sunlight and I'm leaving blank spaces for the door and window. I'm adding a bit more of the lower part of the tree here, and then I'm gonna draw in some of the lawn down below, curving around the side of the house. Again, just defining that space, making the whole scene a little bit more real and 3D. I'm going to recommend, as always, that you test out a few colors in advance before you even start, which you can see I did uh, at the bottom of the page there, so you know which colors are going to be your most essential ones. Uh, and you can always add more later as you see what your picture needs, 
while it develops, but having those colors selected a little bit beforehand helps you keep your flow going without having to pause and say which blue is right, which green is right, etc. all the time. We know that the trim on the house and windows and things is white, but just the same way as the color of the wall looks much darker in the shadow, it's not going to be a pure white edge of the window down there under that roof. So I'm taking some of that same blue I've been using to shade in a bit of those spots I left blank for the window and door. The surface of the windows looks pretty much completely black from my angle, so that's what I'm going to use. Now I'm putting in some lines for the railing on the porch. Again, putting in the dark or the negative space between those bars rather than drawing in the bars themselves since they're white. And I'm not paying attention really to how many there are, I'm not counting them, I'm just indicating the pattern. And I'm gradually working in some more of my shadows that I'm seeing in gray and other dark colors. Speaking of gray, I'm going to use some gray and kind of beige or tan tones to add to the roof. Again, not counting or drawing individual tiles, but looking at the texture and pattern that I see there. You may have observed that compared to a lot of the brighter colors, the reds and greens and so on of the surrounding environment, the walls and roof of the house look pretty gray. But the difference between them is that the wall is sort of a slate bluish grayish color, whereas the roof tiles are much warmer gray. I made the artistic choice to push that difference and separate them a little bit more, making the wall more bluish than it is in real life, for example. And you may have to emphasize things even further sometimes if you're working with limited colors. Now I'm continuing to go in and add shadows on the steps here and on the pavement. As you're drawing, remember to pay attention not just to what you're seeing, but to your other sensations as well. Is it warm? Is it humid or cold? Is it windy? How does your neighborhood and street feel? Is it sleepy? boisterous, happy, tense, and what is your own mood? One of the most important and useful things that I learned is that the type of marks and colors you make can affect and reflect the mood of your picture. So if you were drawing a scene of something scary or depicting an angry confrontation, you could make angry scribbly marks or if you're drawing something very peaceful and sleepy, you might use gentle pastel colors and soft, calm, slow marks. And I think that to some extent, your mood and the mood that you feel in whatever you're drawing will come through whether you're doing that on purpose or not. So I think it's important to try to notice and follow what your gut is saying. You can see now I'm working on some of the lawn and surroundings on the left hand side of the house, including that little shrub there. The stuff in the background doesn't have to be very well defined, but it's nice to have at least the shapes and colors because it makes the house feel 
less alone and more like it's really located in a specific place. That's some brown for that edge of that red brick sort of building. There's some sort of a dark shape behind that red building and I'm going to use a purple with a brown over it to mark that shape because mixing those colors together creates a slightly more interesting and complicated color than just using the plain brown out of the box. With crayons you have potentially access to a lot of existing colors that are made for you, but that doesn't mean that you have to stick with those ones only. If you're trying to go for a very bright, sunny, kind of exaggerated color effect and make your image look cartoon-like, then you can stick with the brightest, uh, most intense versions of the colors that you see in your crayon box, or you can create an effect that is sometimes more muted or muddy, sometimes richer and more complex. Uh, if you take your colors and mix them together, especially colors that don't necessarily look like they would go together. I've added some more green to the right hand side of the image for the trees there on that side of the house. Now I'm taking a light gray and blending a little bit on the roof and adding it to the sky as well to create a bit of atmosphere instead of that white paper. It shade in the door under the porch there. Now I'm going to add some deeper color to my flags there since the area around them is darkened enough to give me a good basis of comparison. A big part of drawing for me is finding that balance between the planning I do in advance and having some idea of how I'm going to execute a drawing and also paying a lot of attention as I go and seeing how the drawing evolves and progresses and what it tells me it needs from moment to moment. You darken one area or you fill in detail in one area and then if you look at it closely, at the whole drawing I mean, you can see, oh okay, now this area looks like it needs more in, in uh, balance to that in comparison. I'm doing the same thing for those wonderful trees on the left side behind the house right now because, as you can see from my camera, those trees are way darker than the house and when I was starting out the drawing that was true even though I had marked them in quite lightly, but now that the house has more filled in, the trees need to be way darker in comparison. I'm using that same dark blue on the house as well for balance and just adding extra shading and dimension to it. And you may have noticed I started out with a brown shadow on the trees because I like the intensity of that dark blue, but the brown mixed with the green and the blue creates, as I was saying, a richer and more complex color that I prefer for this particular drawing. I'm also trying to darken this blue of the house a little bit because in reality it's noticeably darker than the roof, which I'm sort of getting away from in my drawing. I want to pull it back as much as I can. You can see that the blue under the porch is quite dark now, but it's also a much more saturated and intense blue than I want it to be in the shade there, since shadows often wash out colors and make them less recognizable 
as you know if you've ever taken a nighttime walk, for example. So I like the effect of that brown and the blue together. Now to use a lighter blue and add a bit of shadow to the white railing and posts there. I'm trying to talk a little bit less in this video so that you can also use it as a Sounds of Frogtown relaxation cassette. It's kind of harder to make out what's going on in the corner and side of the house that are partially covered up by that tree. So I'm just looking for the colors and shapes that I see and the lighter and darker values and trying to fill those in. If I was more worried about getting it really accurate this time, I could stand up and walk around a little bit more to ensure that I got more of a, a well-rounded perspective on the house. And I could say, oh, okay, this shape I see is such and such a thing. But in this case, since I'm just trying to get down my general impression of what I'm seeing, I don't find that to be necessary. Adding some brown to the blue up on top as well, because why not? Honestly, brown and blue mixed together are a really beautiful combination in my opinion, and I use it possibly to excess. Darkening some of the front edges of those roofs and maybe indicating some tile marks, adding shadow under the door, now looking at some of the slightly finer details now as we're getting to that point, and putting some shading in here on the side of the porch to visually separate the side from the front of it. Houses are usually quite complicated, and drawing them can feel like a lot to take on, but you'll be a lot of the way there already if you can practice and get more confident in drawing basic geometric objects inside your home. Even taking something like an empty cardboard box and making a quick sketch of it, noticing how the light and shadow help define the sides and edges of it will give you a lot of the same skills that you can ultimately apply to drawing complicated buildings and other objects like cars, all those things. Those same basic skills are the most useful and will apply with practice to just about anything. I'm darkening those trees behind the house some more, going in with more layers of different colors, not only some brown and other things, but even just layers of different greens. I'm trying to look at the shadows that are there. There's really gorgeous shapes in the in those trees and the branches that are kind of a joy to draw. There's some great movement there too, not only the way the trees lean as a whole, but the drapey, droopy sort of movement in the branches, the way they flow out of the center.
in the sunnier parts of those same trees that aren't in shadow, I'm going over them with a lighter green to make the, the lighter parts more vibrant and also blend some of the colors I've already used together. Definitely try this out at home, the taking a quite light color that matches the ones you've been using and going over an entire area you have been drawing on is great for blending colors together and making them look more unified and less scratchy sometimes. And the same thing can work really well with colored pencils too. It's just going to take a couple of small light marks, basically more scribbles, to indicate the tulips lining the path leading up to the house and create the impression that there's more there that we could see if we came in closer. There's another roof back there behind the house that I'm drawing that's only really going to show up as a little triangular area in my artwork. And I'm making it a little bit greenish, grayish, to help it blend into the background somewhat since it's so much not the focus of what I'm doing. It's just there as extra bits of world. And I'm continuing to use my marks and different colors of green to build up texture and dimension in the lawn there because there are different types of plants, grass, little clumps of taller things that I don't know quite what they are, but I can see how they look different from other spots. Now to finally start filling in more of the tree in front of the house, which has mostly been just the ghost of a tree this whole time. I'm trying to make sort of small scribbly marks, like a tight motion of my hand to create the impression of many leaves without having to draw each one. Adding some green here on the trunk too. The trunk has this lovely dappled shadow from the leaves up on top. Adding more green on the lawn, a little bit on the house too just to create that unified color scheme in the picture. And I'm going to put some light orange in the sunny spots on that tree, which are up on top since the sun is high in the sky. Um, and the orange mixed with the green creates a really lovely sort of sunlit effect. When you're looking at a tree, there's sort of the one big shape of the leaves all together. And as well, there are usually clusters of leaves that you can think of sort of as not really following a geometric shape per se, but you can think them sort of loosely as these rounded clumps and each one will have its own bit of shadow. You can keep breaking it up that way into smaller areas if that helps you understand the shapes and the lighting of what you're seeing. Got some lovely sort of apple green in there, making those that foliage look really nice. And some more grayish green into the trunk and the background keeping the right hand side of this picture quite vague because there's another house over there that I don't want to get into especially and I like how the focus is on the house that I already have there. I feel totally fine with leaving that part of the image, the right part, look a little bit unfinished.
here's that same thing I was talking about earlier again blending and enriching the colors that are already there by going over them in large areas with a light version of the color so in this case a light green and I'm going to add even more to the lawn around the house A little bit more shading on the red part of the porch here with a sort of dark reddish brown. I'm getting to that end point in my drawing where I'm liking how it all looks overall and feeling like it's starting to come together as its own little world. So it's sort of down to the nitty gritty details now, focusing on specific areas that I think need more help. For example, darkening those branches on this tree here to make them stand out more and be strong and powerful so they can hold up those leaves. I'm using a purple or violet color for this because I think it blends nicely with the greens and browns I've already used on the wood of the tree. When you've reached this point, look carefully at your subject matter and at your drawing itself and think about what you want most to stand out. So I want my windows to pop a little bit more as well as those flags, so I'm adding shadows around those areas based on what I'm seeing, but also emphasizing some things for the effect in the drawing because I try to think of reality in cases like this as my guideline rather than the absolute rule. And as part of that, I might take some dark versions of colors that are already present in the picture and use them to sharpen or outline some of the things that are there. What those things are is going to depend on you and what you're drawing and what's important to you in that scene. I have my dark purple here again and I'm going to take it. One of the things I'm going to do is emphasize even more that corner and edge of the porch to bring the plane of it that's facing us, the viewers, bring that forward. And add some shadows on the lawn from the plants and under the tree. Shadows are really what let us see the shape and dimension of things outside of just their silhouette.
I'm going to remind you that we would always, always love to see any drawings that you make, whether inspired by one of our videos or not. So please share it with us on the Createch or Library social media. Our Instagram page, Createch SPPL, is one great place to do that, and I really look forward to hearing from you, knowing how you're doing, and seeing your beautiful artwork. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a lovely day.